Uh, welcome to all of y'all. It's uh, all about democracy to have uh, uh, contributions and participation by citizens, so we welcome you. Uh, let's uh, stand and do the pre Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Almighty God, we ask that you be with us tonight. Uh, as we go through a, a fairly complex agenda, uh, help us to, to walk in ways that are pleasing in your sight. Amen. I would just like to note that the American flag is on the wrong side, folks. It's supposed to be to the right of the presiding officer. So, anyway... We'll we'll fix it after the meeting, but just just noting that so that we're right. Okay. All right. The agenda is is in front of you. What say ye, board? The motion is to approve the agenda as written. Any discussion? Any other additions? Okay. That addition will be added uh, uh, after the mayor and town board reports. Okay, if you're in favor of the agenda as amended, uh, please raise your right hand. It is so entered. All right. Well, we have a proclamation uh, for the Rotary Club of Anger. Uh, are you representing the Rotary Club, Dolores? Y'all come forward. This is a proclamation celebrating the 40th, 40th anniversary of the Rotary Club of Anger. Whereas Anger Rotary Club has been serving the citizens of our community since its charter on May the 5th, 1983. And whereas the Rotary motto, service above self, inspires members to provide humanitarian service, embody high ethical standards, and promote goodwill and peace in the world. And whereas Rotary funds club projects and supports volunteers with community uh, expertise to provide medical supplies, health care, clean water, food uh, production, job training, and education to millions in need, particularly in socioeconomically challenged regions. Whereas Rotary International is the world's largest privately funded source of global education and achievement through scholarships, exchange programs, and humanitarian grants. And whereas Anger's local Rotary has been a partner in the maintenance and longevity of the Rotary College at the Boys and Girls Home at Lake Waccamo, Kiwanis does too, Supporting and, and is supported of the Anger Food Pantry and the Buddy Backpack Program, committed the first responder appreciation and recognition, dedicated to education through the Reading Program Awards, the Anger Elementary Outdoor Classroom, Environmental Preservation, and the Workshop Series for Alzheimer's Care of our senior citizens. Whereas the Rotary Club of Anger has been a partner of the Polio Plus initiative since inception 
1985 and through decades of unwavering partnership with medical teams, two of three known uh, because of that, two of three known polio strands have been fully eradicated. Now, therefore, I, Robert K. Smith, mayor of the town of Anger, along with the members of the uh, Anger Board of Commissioners, encourage all residents to recognize and celebrate 40 years of many accomplishments and for improving the human com condition in our community and around the way, around the world. Signed, Robert K. Smith, Mayor. Thank you. Amen. Amen. And Dolores wants to introduce our uh, participants here. The, the folks here is uh, President-elect, our upcoming president, Tammy Farley, uh, former president, Sherry Gregory, former president, Andy Ciroli, and treasurer and uh, former president, <laughs> Gail Turner. And I'm Dolores Price. <laughs> okay. Thank you. We commend you for all the work you do for the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. <clears throat> okay, next we have public comments. Um, the each comment will be limited to three minutes apiece. The speakers will be as listed on this um, sheet. And the topic should be related to the town of Anger only. And speakers should not expect board action or deliberation on subject matter brought up during the citizen comment segment at this time, necessarily. Uh, if you have any handouts, uh, please, please provide copies to the clerk. The first, uh, and incidentally, if you want to speak as to any subdivision, subdivision issue later in the meeting, I would uh, commend you to speak then. Uh, this is intended for more general comments, but uh, we'll hear from you whenever you speak. So, T. Warren Gregory. Okay. And please, um, when you come up, give your name and address, please. Bob Juiceness. Use. I don't know how that works. Let's try it. It's all up in my face. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm Bob Juiceness, 574 North Broad Street East. I'm here again today to ask you once more to finally address a request I made weeks ago. It seems that showing up and begging for a response is the only way to hear back about important issues under this board. So here I am again. After I was threatened by an appointed official, the spouse of a sitting commissioner, and at a meeting similar to this one, you determined that it was completely acceptable to find that he was not acting in his official capacity and thus took zero action. I have failed to find any notes or minutes of how this conclusion was reached. Was this meeting behind closed doors? And if so, on what grounds? Was Commissioner Hawley involved in this discussion, despite her glaring conflict of interest? I then requested a public hearing to address this issue, an opportunity to demonstrate the transparency and accountability that this board has so often claimed to promote. And yet, when I made this request, I was again slapped with the silence of indifference and disregard. Further, it has been suggested that perhaps I'm only asserting my First Amendment rights because I have some ulterior motive or agenda. This is garbage that deflects from the reality. I'm only being so assertive on this issue because it's infuriating that this board continues to delay and bury its head in the sand. I simply believe, perhaps too optimistically, that local government officials shouldn't be allowed to threaten people with zero repercussions. Finally, 
to anyone that may be confused, me speaking out has nothing to do with the investigation by the Daily Record into nepotism, by the ABC local board or any wrongdoings, by any board as a whole. I'm speaking out because an individual treated my liberty as cheap and disposable when I dared question self-serving proposals to use funds so desperately needed elsewhere to benefit their property value. Please address these concerns, stop the apathy, and take some action. Thank you. Thank you so much for your comments. Uh, Ashley Strickland. May have to pull that down a little bit. Just a little bit. All right. Is this okay? That's fine. Okay. I'm Ashley Strickland. I reside at 16 South Pleasant Street here in Anger. Here with me tonight is my husband, Jake, and our two boys, Cash and Cage. Jake served in the military for over 12 years before he was medically retired. Our oldest son had already lived in nine homes before we purchased our house here in Andrew two and a half years ago. So putting roots down in an area that we could call home was really important to us. I'm speaking to you tonight about Jack Marley Park. I really look at this from two different perspectives, that of a realtor who understands our community. The desires of those looking to move to the area and what matters most to the ones who choose to make this town their home. I'm also speaking from the heart as a concerned mother. And I'm nervous. <laughs> Sorry. When I'm working with my clients, I'm often asked about the schools in the area, the crime, accessibility to shopping, and what opportunities are available to the children. One thing that has never come up in my conversations with any clients has been the design, appearance, or even age of a water tower. From an aesthetic point of view, sure, the new pedestal mushroom towers are nicer, but I can't justify spending a half million dollars on appearance when there are actual needs in the community. The list isn't short, our police station, the town hall, the water piping, and without a doubt, we need to utilize the space that we already have and invest in a new park. I heard some of you speaking in previous meetings that I did take the time to go back and watch about your wants for our community. More clothing boutiques were mentioned, more shopping, more food choices, but those that are looking to move to this area, they are the future success of those businesses that you personally want. And they are typically either planning to raise a family here or already have children who are involved at some level. During sports seasons, parking is quite literally impossible and has become a real safety concern for so many of us. We live just a few blocks away and have begun riding our bikes to the boys' games to avoid the parking lot and make sure that we can even make it to the games on time. I see cars parked up and down the roads in people's yard space. Trucks are parked on the curbs and sidewalks of the park. And this is no way a safe environment for our children. My oldest son should be able to play on the playground or the skate park while his younger brother has a game without us having to worry that he will get run over. I've heard other families' conversations about taking their children to other towns and cities to play sports simply because of how chaotic the park has become and how short the seasons are for the kids. We can't blame the Parks and Rec for doing the best with what they have. How beautiful and joyous is it to see so many new kids in the area getting involved? It's a blessing, and it deserves the investment. We can do better, and we can have better if it was the priority. The chaos and concern also make it hard for anyone else that wants to enjoy the park. I would not want to step into the chaos and enjoy a picnic with my family by the water. I wouldn't want to take my children to the park to play or ride their scooters on the trails. I'm almost done. Just finish out, please. With that many people swarming the park. So this isn't just a need for more space to accommodate the local sports. It affects the entire community. I'm not ignorant to think that this issue is not one that has been discussed multiple times amongst a multitude of people. My concern is not that you may not see the need. My concern is that as elected officials who were voted in by the community, you would spend frivolously on something that was truly just a want, ignoring the needs right in front of you. Mr. Coates spoke up and said it best when he stated he couldn't help but think where else that 500000 could be spent other than on something aesthetic. And I think almost anyone in this community who watched the meeting or who knows what is happening feels the exact same way. 
Decisions like that are what lead to our, your community losing both their faith in you to do the job and to trust that you have our best interest and more importantly, our kids' best interest at heart. I love our town is growing at such a fast pace and we truly love where we live. We are invested in where our children are growing up. We're asking that you will do whatever it takes to work towards the completion of the second park, even if it means setting some personal desires aside for the greater good of the community. I personally hope that we can all work together to make this one of the safest and most desirable towns surrounding the Triangle. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have a few things I could say, but we're, since we don't normally do that, I won't do it tonight. Uh, Craig Honeycutt. Commissioners, how y'all doing? All right. I'm Craig Honeycutt. I live at 189 North Broad Street West, Andrew, North Carolina. I got two things that I would like to talk about. <clears throat> First one is, um, and I'll be brief as I'll be quick as possible. First one is a few months ago in a regular board meeting, we had a member of the ABC board, which is the chairman of the ABC board, threaten or ask the citizen to step outside in the parking lot. I have now read two articles in the newspaper about this incident. It doesn't seem like anything has been done about this. I was just wondering if the board is going to do anything about it, or if not, is it because the board or y'all appointed this member, or is it because his wife is a commissioner? I do believe if it had been me or anyone else, I'm sure the board would have taken action pretty quick. After all was said and done, I really think after all was said and done, I really think now in my heart that an apology would have gone a long way. And maybe we wouldn't be at this point now. See what I'm talking about? Second, I personally think that we need to revisit the water tower. I think that a half a million dollars that we don't have is a lot of money to spend on upgrades. When it comes to water towers, I really don't think that the type or where it's located has anything to do with the value of your house or property. If anything, it may raise the value. However, Commissioner Hawley thinks it would decrease the property value of her, their subdivision. So in my opinion, it would be a conflict of interest and she should have recused herself. It appears that a water tower is not an issue since the board and the citizens of Andrew have not heard of, I've not heard anybody that, out of that subdivision, any constituents, um, I've not heard anybody say anything about it. I'm done. I'm through. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Karen Williams. I am um, Karen Williams. I am, um, my address is 1356 Pea Ridge Road. I am born and been a native of Andrew my whole entire life. I stand here today with my husband, Rob, and my son, Reed. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank you. I'm here to not to be negative in any ways, but to offer my support and um, research advice. I am a realtor in the market and have been for 23 years. I'm super excited about the growth that our community has and where we're going, and I'm sure that it's quite overwhelming because it is for many of us driving up and down the street. One of the things, though, that we have come to our attention of four years of working with the Parks and Recs, and that's what I'm, my discussion is today, is for four years we have coached, we have sponsored, we've been involved, and Derek and his staff do a fantastic job but the parking there is a true safety concern, and I'm here to say that because I don't want it to be a traumatic event that causes us to do something different. In my profession, I'm also a state political coordinator, work with our legislative teams. I have met with some of our senators. I do know that there is funding there that we can receive. I am willing to help. There is funding, I've been told that we can get that to start the first phase of that park and move those soccer fields we need to do that. I don't expect the town to go and spend tons of money, but I do believe that there is money that can be received. I know writing grants takes quite a bit of time, but I'm 
concerned that the surrounding towns have received grants and Andrew has not applied for one since 2010. Um, I write grants and do grants for a charity that I run. So I know the length of time, but it's free money. They're not always match for match. But with that and with our state support, I believe that we can move forward and start a first phase of that park. When I look at the numbers and the research and the things that I've done, we gained 150 children in one season. And that is going to double. When you look at surrounding areas, when they've got three and 4,000 children in their parks and recs, we're going to be there. And we're going to, I don't want to see us to have to cut or tell someone that they can't play because we don't have the space. So I stand here today um, thanking you for what you're doing and offering truly my support. Um, being the contacts that I have in this market and contacts with the legislative that I believe that we can do something that would not cost Andrew a lot. I know there's tremendous amounts of needs if it's town hall or whatever it you guys have on your economic plan, but I think that we can do two. I think we can do two things at a time. I think we can do that when people are funding to us and supporting us and you've got residents that want to help. So I truly ask you, I've emailed all of you today, had a drain footage that I sent over that was done at that part to show you how detailed that it was. Um, I have a Facebook group of supporters. I'm not a negative person. I want Andrew to be shed in a positive light. So we have a group of people that want to help and do things. So please let us know how we can and that we can move forward. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, Thomas Raines. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Um, I know it takes a lot uh, of dedication to give up your time, personal time, for um, hosting public comments, and I do appreciate. My name it said is Thomas Raines, and I'm from Garner. And even though I don't live in Andrew, my heart and soul um, is in Andrew through an eight-year-old eight grandson that's destined for the major leagues and hopefully for the St. Louis Cardinals. <laughs> Remember that name. <laughs> um, I, through my career, um, I have been involved with a lot of photography from uh, several newspapers and high schools taking pictures of sports and things, and that's what uh, brought me to um, here tonight is I want to compliment you on the incredibly <coughs> beautiful uh, facilities that you have at Jack Marley Park. I've seen schools that I frankly are in terrible shape, but um, I was impressed the first time I came to Jack Marley because I thought here is a working restroom and you've got paper towels. <laughs> so I want to compliment you on and the Parks and Recreation uh, staff for that. But the uh, most important thing that I'm here tonight is to talk about the parking, and it is a serious issue. Um, the, um, this is not an issue of everybody wanting to park up front near the ball fields, but this is just lack of spaces. Um, there was a game, uh, the second game of the season, where my wife was bringing my grand, uh, my wife was coming to take some pictures for me, and she couldn't find a parking place. She had to turn around and come back home. And I, that brought to my mind, suppose uh, she was bringing our grandson there because sometimes we do pick him up after school and we'll bring him to the game to help um, our son and daughter-in-law out. So that meant he wouldn't have been at the game. And I know we're not the only ones faced with single parents, so you're going to lose, and that's not fair to the child. Um, Parking is an emotional and selfish issue at that park because everybody wants to get there, and particularly the 7 o'clock games are the worst. I've seen double parking. I've seen trucks parked on the medians. I've seen people parked in front of other cars. Now, what's going to happen in an emergency if somebody needs to leave? I'm surprised, to be honest with you, there hadn't been a fight yet. I'm thinking the citizens of Andrew must be a lot more forgiving than the citizens of some Wake County towns um, not to have uh, heated issues at parking there, but I think that uh, there are a couple of uh, temporary solutions for that. Um, uh, some of the off-street parking, I 
printed out a map of the town, and I want to give this after conclusion to the clerk here. But uh, there are several streets near the ballpark that where you could permit parking um, on the streets for the ball game uh, nights and not necessarily all the times. And see, I don't mind uh, walking a mile or two to see my grandson play, so it's not an issue of walking. It's just an issue of finding a place to park. Um, I also uh, did kind of a aerial search of the facility there at Jack Marley Park, and I said pass these out, but the areas highlighted here in white can be made into uh, parking spaces. There are dead areas up there at the park where um, you can have uh, parking spaces made. I'm a retired biochemical um, engineer from Bayer Pharmaceuticals, so I have experience dealing with contractors, and I know it can be done. Um, so I'm hoping that said this is a perm this is temporary solution to the new fields are built, but I'm hoping that uh, you know my name I'll be more than happy to volunteer to uh, work with anybody on this because okay. we only have three months left before uh, we resume the baseball problems in uh, September. Anyway, thank you, thank you, you so much. much. Uh, and uh, I will. My my brother and his wife are both biochemists, so uh, I appreciate you. Um, I'm going to depart just slightly and make a summary statement. There are four projects that we would love to get done tomorrow, but each of them cost around $10 million. And without getting a a low interest loan i don't know how we could get them all done but uh thank you so much for your concern we appreciate that okay um consent item let's see we have the the various minutes and the budget the budget amendment uh Number eight, I think we discussed that previously, and the munitions training at uh, field budget or ordinance. Am I correct, Mr. Manager, and all of these are on the uh, consent agenda? I will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. I make the motion is before you. Um, all in favor? Uh, Please uh, raise your hand. It's so moved. Okay. Thank you. Public hearings. Um, so there is first a public hearing on the system development fees uh, as evaluated by Environling and. Uh, we have to do this every five years. We did this. We did do this about five years ago, and uh, as I understand it, um, the fees are going to be pretty much kept where they are. So, uh, Mayor and Council, thank you very much. And yes, um, fortunately, it's it's. Um, almost pretty level there have been some changes between the water and the sewer some uh, facilities had more depreciation you added some facilities on the wastewater side so but overall the total was about the same uh, the statute requires a systematic approach to this um, uh, statute 162a article 8 provides for a direction for calculating, developing, managing, collecting, and making the due process to approve system development fees. Why don't you explain to our group here what system development fees are? Uh, system development fees are fees new customers pay in order to help compensate for all the addition for the additional capacity that's been on the system that's been put that's been planned in there for growth 
but there's been nobody except the existing customers to pay for that growth. So the existing capacity on your system has a value. And the system development fees provides a way for new customers coming in to make a contribution for what the existing customers have already paid for the value of your system. I mean, you can't, you can't build a, you know, a hundred gallon water system and serve a hundred gallons and then build something the next day to serve two more houses coming in. So you have to plan in the future for doing that. Uh, the system of will fees look at a 10 year horizon for planning. Uh, the process, um, the statutes put together a process for how you value your system in order to determine how you, what your system is, is valued for in terms of capacity and gallons. Uh, as you know, we've been working on this since the first of the year. Uh, February, do you have the next slide? Sorry. Oh, um, as we were talking about, the, there had, there's very little change overall for this. And the next slide, we'll go into the, the process. Um, starting in February, uh, you first received the draft presentation of the system development fee analysis and approach timeline to uh, get the project completed this year so you'll be able to implement your fees July 1st to replace the fees that will go out July 1st. On April 4th, you received the final system development fee analysis. <coughs> the analysis was prepared in accordance with Article 162A, excuse me, State Statute 162A, Article 8, which provides for the mechanism of how you calculate it, what value you can add to the system, uh, the fact that it has to be done and reviewed by a professional engineer or an accounting firm, and it provides guidelines that you, once you come up with that number, you cannot charge more than that number. You are allowed to charge less. Um, also, as part of that, uh, there's a request for posting for comments. The system development fees have been posted for 45 days uh, uh, prior to this date. Um, I must say we had one question, and it was a very good question because it's not really obvious until you read the rate schedule of the town. But the system development fees only apply to new connections to the water and wastewater system. If a, if a customer comes in and buys an existing house, there's no system development fee for that. It's already connected to the system. But for new construction, system development fee is collected for that new construction. When is that collected? Um, I think it's when your permits. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's not when you put the blinds in. It's later when the house is starting. Right. Uh, as of May 20th, the, the posting requirement was complete. Again, the one question was the S system O on fee is for new connections to water and wastewater. At that point, you have completed all of the requirements for this with the exception of, are there any questions? Uh, for uh, for the system development fee at this time, and you need to approve your system development fee for the next five years by July 1st, 2023. Okay. We need to open a public hearing, and uh, once we close the public hearing, we'll, we'll see if there's discussion among the board. So thank you for that uh, initial presentation. Thank you. Um, We'll open the public hearing. Are there any comments from those in attendance? This is kind of a complicated thing that we that we have to do every five years. Uh, all right. Are there? Any questions or comments on the board? I do have one question. Okay. Um, are, are, are these fees, do we do a comparison against other towns and 
of, of say our size and growth potential or are we just basing it on what we need to pay for the services okay would you like to respond to that please that slide yes that slide we have provided a comparison however the statute has direction for how the fees are calculated and you cannot deviate from those directions on how they're calculated it has to do with the value of your system how much has been appreciated how much new facilities you are putting in how much debt you have and basically the condition of your system are you keeping it up it has a higher value if you're not keeping it up and letting it run down it has a lower value the size of your system as well your system here for your size is a very good number you you've, you've had basically what it is, is you've had balanced growth and you planned out your debt um th not that i don't know the answer but i'd like to hear your take on you say it is valued upon its upkeep its level um where where would you what would your comment be about the condition of Andrews water and sewer um what how we were rated i can't provide a rating but overall looking at your system if you follow your plan that you have for water and sewer improvements you will keep up and have a very valuable system it will be operating properly okay yeah. so basically the answer to my question is it is totally dictated by Statute. law yeah. yes okay got it thank you thank you any other questions or a comment if not I'll uh, close the public hearing and um, any other questions from the board or from staff or comments from staff Tom Mayor, I was going to add, we don't need any action tonight when you adopt the budget. The rate schedule will be in that budget, and the um, new charges are included in that revised rate schedule. So, Okay, so do we, we don't need to take any action now. It did oh, suggest no, that there was action we needed to do tonight. <clears throat> but but okay. just to be clear, when you adopt the budget, you will be adopting this fee. So if there's right. issues or questions about it, now would be the time to have that discussion. Right. Okay. Anything further? All right. We received that uh, for uh, approval in the in the budget. All right. Second thing is a voluntary annexation petition uh, submitted by G and J Development LSC. Uh, twenty-eight point three five acres at fifty-nine sixty-three NC ten two ten in Anger. Um, note that we can't do forced uh, annexations, and so this is a voluntary annexation position. Uh, who wants to uh, uh, speak on this from the town? Tom, I'll start, Mayor. You had a petition, as you mentioned, from G and J Development um, that was brought before the board. The board directed the clerk to certify the sufficiency of the petition which she has done at your last meeting you scheduled a date for a public hearing on this annexation and Don, um, we still have a, a few questions i'm gonna get jeff sort of up to um, date you on where we are on this one Tom, um, we may ask that you um table the actual adoption of the ordinance until the july meeting but I'm all at Jeff update on where we are. Okay, Jeff. Welcome. This is your your first appearance, I believe. Outside of the workshop. Last right. Time. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, board. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Richard. Um, so this is a, a, an annexation along two, NC 210. Um, the Just your mic up a little bit so that we can hear sorry. you. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Um, and so it is currently outside of the town's town limits and ETJ approximately two and a half miles outside of town um, we do have a, a petition it has been certified to be sufficient for public hearing that's what you all are having tonight 
What has sort of occurred during the transition between myself and my predecessor was a, a rezoning was submitted along with the annexation petition. That rezoning was slated to go to the planning board last month. I think that was maybe my first day, um, so we did not have planning board. Next week, the rezoning request associated with this rezoning will go to the planning board for their consideration and recommendation to you all in July. So as we have, we've advertised, there may be folks here to speak. Um, you should hear those folks, you should ha hold the public hearing, and if you feel so to close the public hearing, you can do that and then hold action until July 5th. Or continue it until Or continue the public hearing until that certain date of July 5th. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, is the representative of the development here? I've been looking, and I don't believe they are, Mayor. Okay. Oh, how how can we get the uh, information before us then? Just open the public hearing for public okay. hearing. Yeah, the information on the annexations should be in the packet, and then it's just open the public hearing to see if anyone okay. supports or All right. not supports. So I will then open the public hearing. Um, is there anyone here who'd like to speak as to this voluntary an annexation petition? Okay. Hearing none, um, are there questions from the board? Not at this time. Okay. I'll close the public hearing. I'll just mention if you did want to keep the public hearing open, you could do that, but you could also close it. All right. Well, why don't we then um, keep it open until the next board meeting? Is that right? Okay. I like that idea. Uh, all right. Since we don't have enough information or anything about it, we should not close it up until we have the details. Is that the consensus of the board? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, there's another matter we need to take care of that wasn't on the agenda, I think. I believe uh, uh, Junior is, is going to have a birthday. When is when is that? Uh, all right. Mm. So let's give him a hand as to his in, increased age and wisdom. All right. I don't know about wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, uh, let's, let's let's keep it in in line there. All well, right. I would add that would be one day after mine. Oh, okay. Ah. Well, congratulations to you. And you're forty three. Forty-three, is that right? Forty-three. I was actually born on my mother's birthday. Yeah. Uh, not her original no, birthday. No, I take it, but no. Okay. All right. So then we have a voluntary annexation petition as well by CBD MMP JV LLC. You may need to explain that to us. Uh, to annex 48.45 acres off Matthew Mills Pond Road in Anger. Uh, the uh, clerk has sent this back to us, saying it's ready for discussion. So uh, you want to present again? Uh, Thank you, Mayor, members of the board. This one's a little bit outside of my wheelhouse. Um, it was in the works prior to my arrival um, and has been sort of moving along um, steadily. There's no, to my knowledge, in my office, there's no subdivisions, there's no plan for it. I did um, coordinate with the applicant if they wanted to move forward with the public hearing tonight knowing that we don't have plans or anything in the works, and they did indicate yes to go ahead and move forward with the public hearing. I, I'm not sure if they're here. I haven't met them yet, um, but they would consider, they, they're okay with the public hearing moving forward. And you all 
making action if you would like. Mr. Mayor, Jeff, I, I think we all got text that day. I know I did. Saying that his son was 13th birthday or something, and he would apologize for not being here. I got, I got an email That's related that to is. that. Um, was that Wesley? Or, yes. yeah, okay, yes. So you probably got a text. So, I, as the chair, I would suggest that we can't hold a hearing on an indefinite situation. Yeah. So I, I would suggest that we put this off. Are you here? Okay. Well, come on down. Right. <laughs> Give us something. Well, was that the text we got tonight? Was that accurate? Now, that I don't know. I haven't talked to Wesley. So that's, okay. about, that's possible. Um, okay, I'm so going to open the public hearing and, and let you present your side of it then. Okay, so, so the reason we don't have plans associated with this is we were, at the time, we were being instructed that we can't submit, because we're going to do a plan unit development here, because this is the portion they've spoke with, or a lot of you have heard about there, with the 55 bypass coming through, there's going to be a large commercial aspect to this. And then there's also a portion of this we want to be residential. And so we were instructed that the PUD document cannot be submitted until such time as it has been annexed into the town. So that's why you're not seeing a, a plan come in with this, this request. Um, so as far as you know, what we're attempting to do, again, is, is we want to get this annexed in. It's, it's immediately adjacent to the town current limits. There's another parcel there on Matthew Mill Pond as well as backing up on uh, Roy Adams Road, the Dupree Farms pro project. So we are immediately adjacent to the town limits, and we want to bring this in so that we can then bring a PUD to play uh, to account for the commercial aspect and the residential portion that's tied with it. Let's see. Has the uh, description of the property been provided for, for this? Yes. Uh, the application, the map and the description of the pro uh, property are included within the annexation petition. Okay, good. All right, anything else you want to tell us about uh, the annexation? And this is just annexation. It's not approval of the of the PUD subdivision. This is just annexation so that we can then move forward with submitting the PUD documents and the rezoning process. Okay. Which will come back before the board after planning board and staff approvals. Okay. All right. Any questions from the board? Mr. Mayor, uh, I see. I, I guess he just sent it to me. I'd like to read this, in, if you don't mind, real quick. Who is that from? It's from Wesley Fricks. Okay. It says, Commissioner Price, following up on our Matthew Mill Pond annexation hearing tonight, I want to let you know that I'm not, not going to be able to attend due to my son's 13th birthday. If you or any other commissioners have any questions prior to the hearing, I would be happy to answer them and provide whatever input necessary. My apologies for not being able to make it to the 13th is a big one, and I need to be with him tonight. I'm also working to meet with the new town planner, Mr. Jones, along with Mr. Weeks in utilities to discuss our plan for sewer. Hope to have those conversations soon. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Any comments from the audience? Well, I have a question. Well, I I have a question for Jeff. That's, um, um, uh, I just I, wanted to follow up on Commissioner Price's uh, reading of the email. I have a meeting at 10 o'clock with Wesley tomorrow. Who so. is Mr. Weeks? I don't know. <laughs> I think he may have just may have had a mis mistyping there. Okay. Okay. Because he's been communicating with Jimmy and I. Okay. So. Okay, Alan. Um, and again, I'm having a little. I see this map here. It looks more like a weather report of a lava <laughs> it's spread. Very busy. Um, yes. I couldn't tell you where this is or what this is. I, I in honesty. Agree. Not that. I, but you are saying, Jeff, that is is this being new and new to us, and yes. and this coming is this working for you? I'm curious. Um, we, we're saying that it does butt up to what our uh, town lines already right now right. so it's just an extension step out and right. we're not looking at a satellite extension two and a half miles away from Andrew I want to yeah. make sure that this is again just expanding the horizon yes. where it is correct and um, and you're okay with it being done this way I mean like I said I, I've always you know we've, we've looked at quite a few of these and um, 
you know, just because we're annexing it into town doesn't mean that we are approving what they're building there. Um, it, we, we're just opening up the town limits. And if, they, if it doesn't then meet the needs of the town, somebody's paying tax dollars after that. That's the way I look at it. Okay. Further comments? Well, again, this is only approving to bring the property into the town of Anger. Mm -hmm. uh, any, anything else anybody wants to say? If not, I'll close the hearing. Anything else from the board? I'm here. I think we need a motion to adopt um, the ordinance. I'm annexing it into the corporate limits. I was getting there. Any, is there no, is there a, such a motion? I, okay, the motion is to uh, bring the 48.45 acres off of Matthew Mills Pond Road in Anger. The PIN number is 0673-23-1894.000. And so the, the petition is for annexation into the town. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, please raise your right hand. And it's approved unanimously. Okay. Um, all right. Now, the interim, excuse me. Well, we're, let's see. Okay. Um, it uh, has been brought to my attention that uh, Mr. Gregory presented some information to the to the board, but uh, this was not placed on the agenda. Is there any uh, motion to amend the agenda, or how do you want to handle that? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to amend the agenda and let it be heard. Okay, let's see. When when do we need Did to... Did the mayor get a copy of this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I guess he, he was confused. Yeah, I understand okay. that. All right. Uh, how about at the... After, the, or just before the town manager's report, we can add it there. How about that? Yeah. All right, if all in favor of amending the agenda in that manner, please raise your right hand. Okay, so moved. All right, going back, uh, the interim town manager's recommended fiscal year 23-24 budget. Okay, I'm just going to make this very brief in accordance with state statutes. You were presented uh, my proposed budget, um, I think, last Wednesday, which would have been June the 1st. Uh, we have advertised for a public hearing on june 20th um at 6 30 p.m the budget is available for public inspection if they want to come by town hall um we will also put it on line if anybody wants to see but i just wanted to you know to advise the board that you know you do have the budget we're scheduling our budget meetings with the board and the actual public hearing will be june 20th at okay. 6 30 p.m all right Next item. Uh, thank you, Mr. Manager. You uh, you have filled in gloriously and and worked very hard to get all this together. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, the second thing: uh, establishment of criteria for design build method for town, town facilities. Uh, who's going to present that? Um, I will. The um, board in some of your workshops and planning retreat express an interest in possibly building a the town hall or a a police station and uh, possibly using the design build method um, we had a couple of contractors come talk to you that have been involved in that type of facility over the years in accordance with the state statutes the board has to adopt the actual 
uh, let's see the actual um, criteria for the you know, for um, utilizing the design build um, system. So you, um, in your agenda, you have a copy of those proposed criteria, and we're asking the board to um, um, adopt that this evening. At your uh, workshop meeting, we will be bringing you a copy of the proposed RFQ, which would be a time an actual request for the qualifications from builders that would have interesting would have an interest in um, in, in a presenting a proposal to the board. So we'll bring that to you at the workshop meeting. But um, this evening we are. But I'm asking that you. Uh, Approve the design build criteria, and I'll try and answer any questions if anybody's got. Okay, are there any questions from the board members? Well, I guess I was sleeping through the first part there because I, I don't have any questions about this, but I do the previous one he talked about the budget. Okay, when is you said it's going to be up for public hearing on June twentieth? Yes. When is our workshop? June 20th. June when? The 20th. The 20th. Yeah. All right. Are they going to see it before the changes or after the changes? Who? I mean, if we make your recommendation, to say, to say, for example, the budget $4 million and we cut it down to $36,000, I mean, $3 million, which one are they going to see? I mean, that's hmm. what I'm saying. Yeah, what they're seeing now is the. Yes, I do. What? what they'll see now is the actual proposed budget. Tom, I mean, if they want to come to the public hearing and if the board wants to make any adjustments, they would make it that evening. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, design build. Um, as I mentioned, the first step is to adopt your your criteria as um, we've got it in the agenda package for the design. Okay, I'm trying to Build get back method. to them here. Kind of slow. All right. Where did you uh, where did you get these uh, from? Most of it came from the town of Nightdale who has done several design build projects for a couple of fire stations and some other projects. We summarize how that is different from, say, other methods of building? The, the most widely used is the um, bidding of a project that is open for all bidders. And um, you have that, um, and and uh, as a, a architect or an engineer does th th the actual design of the building after that person is hired by the town board, um, those plans are approved. You put the project out for bid, and it can be the one single contract, or you can break it up into general plumbing, electrical, and HVAC. Um, the um, design build, normally what happens, the builder has their own architect or their own engineer can he meet with you, decide what your needs are, and they design it and bring it back to you, you know, to time at a lump sum price. And if you're comfortable with that price, they move forward. Normally that type of, of um, use is, is cheaper and faster. So, it, you know, Tom, it was only changed just a few years ago. So it's, you know, starting to be more of the um, least costly option for public buildings and it's becoming a lot more popular so okay any mm -hmm. further questions from is the board lord knows they're not numbered oh. i'll go ahead and make a motion that we go ahead and adopt the uh design built uh process okay the motion is to adopt the design build process as outlined in the um, material in the agenda See, all that does, it just gives you the option of um, using that. You're not saying that you may actually use it at this particular time, but it does give mm -hmm. you the option to 
that if, use it that if, you if we to were so. to use design bill, this would be what we would go by. Okay. Any further discussion from the board? Um, Mayor, I would like to say, I mean, unfortunately, a lot of the people left here earlier. Um, it has been my experience over the last four years. It seems to take forever to get anything done, and this is only another step. I mean, we met with people. It seems I, I'm, I, I'm frustrated a lot of times when we start talking about something, and it seems to take years for its completion. And um, well, that's why we must start on some of these things. I mean, I know the here, town here. hall is a revisit, but the new police station now has to be built before the town hall can be built. And same things with parks and things of that nature. Um, if we don't get moving on them, you're right, because it is a very slow process. And so we appreciate people's concern about getting on it. We, we're constantly hounding the county. They say they're going to provide us more water and sewer because they're going to build more treatment plants. Well, when are you going to start building it? Because you don't build those things overnight. And it is, it is frustrating from this side, at and least for me. And the cost, they keep saying, is going up. Well, so. So this is we, it. We got to bite the bullet here, and and if we're going to get all these new people into Andrew, we need a need place for them to go to a park and step it up, and uh, <laughs> recreation facilities and a town hall and uh, uh you know, a, a town center for activities. I, I it's just so many needs, and like like I said, it's. Ten million dollars here, ten million dollars there. We don't have ten million dollars in the in the checking account, so we got to figure out some way to to move forward without uh, you know raising taxes and hurting people. So we had a volunteer tonight to help with grants. I always like that. That's great. Definitely. Yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. Town Manager, um, just quickly reading through this. Um, it says, Town of Andrew uh, possesses the appropriate departments and staff to adequately and thoroughly define the needs of the town, of the town as follows. And then it lists what the attorney and town manager and the public utilities and Haunted County inspectors mm -hmm. will be heavily involved in ensuring all the appropriate building codes are being met. I don't see nothing in here uh, for the uh, planning director. Uh, with his experience and knowledge of all the growth he's been through, I think he should have some input, shouldn't he? We can certainly amend it. To include I think all of you department heads are going to be involved one way or the other. Well, this specifies I mean, certain ones. Be, yeah. uh, why don't we say department heads such as and include the uh, the planning director? How about that? Yeah, that would be great. That will work. All right. Anything else? Did you get that, Madam Clerk? Okay. She, she got it. All right. Later. Um, any further discussion? If not, as as amended, uh, would you approve the criteria for design bill method for town facilities? Raise your right hand. <laughs> okay. It's unanimous. All right, and I take it if we run into something that doesn't fit, we can massage it a bit. Right, Mr. Manager? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> All right, amendment to the Community Development Coordinated Job Description. Okay, you currently have a in your agenda packet a copy of the existing job description, which seems to be more events-oriented. And uh, we have given you a proposed change job description, which places significantly more emphasis on um, uh, future economic development. The changes I basically outlined in red, and um, you can see what the um, differences are there. And uh, we are asking that you adopt this this evening and so that we can begin advertising for the position. And if you got any questions about any particular aspect, so I might try and answer those. But I think the board needs to be involved in this and determine what your needs are and what you know, you know, Tom, how you think this position best fits the needs of the town of Anger. Mr. Mayor, uh, yes, Mr. Manager, is it 
specifying here, I don't see it. Let's overlook it. Who is this position reporting to now? It is. It is the prior position was reporting to the the planning director. Right. The new position would be reporting directly to the town manager. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I thought I thought your changes to it were very good and mm-hmm. making it more spot on. <laughs> spot on <laughs> is what we were lo- hoping for this. Um, I think that's what you were looking for last time, but it never really got into the Well, job thank you for preparing the, this before yeah. you leave. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now we go ahead and uh, make the motion to adopt the changes. All right. And- Mr. Kazakavich has made the motion to approve the um, Community D- Development Coordinator job description. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, raise your right hand. It's unanimous. Okay, thank you. Uh, the Andrew Museum has made a request. Who is presenting that? Um, I think we got a call today yeah. that they were not going to be able to be here this evening, so we can table that item there. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll just ask that you put it on the next uh, available meeting. Okay. Uh, number five, uh, resolution to authorize, authorize Harnett County Revenue Administrator to levy and collect taxes for the town of Anger. Now, this is normally done at the beginning of the fiscal year. Why is it right now? I mean, you normally do it in June. Okay. But I mean, I mean we, you're basically authorizing them once you set your tax rate and the budget is a Adopted, we're telling them go collect our taxes, and it's actually more well, both, both. Whenever uh, it's done, it it relates to the next fiscal year, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, it would be for the twenty twenty three taxes, right? Okay. Any uh, discussion? Is this, is this for the Harnett County and Wake? County? Yes, both. Yes, yeah. just Harnett. It should be both. Could be both. They're separated on our document. It just. Oh, okay. You got separate resolution. Can we uh, approve b- both of them at the same yes. time, Mister M- Mister Attorney? I like that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The resolutions R O twelve twenty three twenty three and R O thirteen twenty twenty three to authorize the respective Harnett County Revenues Administrators to levy and collect property taxes for the Town of Anger beginning in the next fiscal year. Is there a motion? I make that motion, Mayor. You've got to repeat what I said. I, I, well, you reworded it so well, I don't want to mess it up. Okay. Um, we'll we'll right. go with Any that. discussion on that? If not, all in favor, please um, raise your right hand. Okay, thank you. And, and folks, this is just boilerplate stuff. Uh, we don't have much choice. They, they have to do this for us anyway. Okay. Um, now, next uh, approval to reduce speed limit on town maintained streets. Chief Thompson is going to cover that one. Hmm. I think the the speed down uh, the main drive at quarter to five is reduced anyway. <laughs> I can't can't get anywhere fast. What's what's going on here? Why do you want to do this? All right, Mayor, Commissioners, I am getting a lot of complaints. Um, the bypass cannot get here fast enough. Amen. So with that being said, <clears throat> summary of the issue is the speed limits in residential districts are 35 miles per hour per, per ordinance unless otherwise posted. This appears to be too fast. For most of our town's residential areas, due to the close proximity of residents and, um, to the roadway and children at play in these areas. Let's make be clear right up front. We're not talking about state or, or national highways. We're only talking about town of Anger streets Correct. separately. Okay. Correct. Um, myself, Captain, Cap, Captain Adams, we've been going around setting these areas around Pleasant, um, Pleasant Street, um, that you have a lot of 
people, especially during rush hour, people going to work, people coming home from work, they're cutting through um, Benson Road, cutting right, cutting right by your house. I lost count on how many cars went by your house this morning. Um, but they're cutting through to get to 210 to avoid coming all the way into town. Well, the, the um, according to ordinance right now, the speed limit is 35 in a lot of these areas. Well, if the speed limit is 35, a lot of these people are driving a little faster than 35. And it looks, from just glancing, it looks like they're going 60 miles an hour on these little short streets. They're not, because we're, we're watching and we're running radar. But it appears that they're going a whole lot faster. Um, and it's just entirely too fast for these little side streets, especially ones with sidewalks on the road, people are walking. Um, they're beside the park. Willow Street. It's just my opinion and the police department's opinion that we need to start looking at um, putting reposting a lot of these speed limits. What is the effect of if if the speed limit's twenty five and the person well okay if the speed limit's thirty five and the person's going forty then that's a, just a regular ticket right. But if the speed limit's 25 and they're going 40, then does that get into another category? Yeah, you start entering into a misdemeanor. It becomes a misdemeanor. Mm -hmm. and are we sure that's what we want to do? I'm just asking. I don't see why we, we can't. I mean, because it's a safety for uh, you know, the people. Again, in order for us to be able to enforce, it, the streets have to be posted. Right. So, it, it, it is going to come, it's going to cost a little money for the town for signage um, and for It's interesting that the road into Raleigh from 401 is also down to 25 now in downtown Raleigh. So, Mr. Uh, Mayor, this way. Chief, um, I'm, I'm having a um, hard time understanding when you say you can't enforce it. If our ordinance, does it say anywhere in our ordinances the speed limit is 35? And Correct. And I put a copy. So if that's the case, why couldn't you write a ticket if someone's running 40, 42, 43 mile an hour without it being posted? We can't. I, I'm talking about we cannot enforce it. It's posted. Yeah. But you this could. General, it, stat, state general statute says in residential um, municipalities and residential areas. Is on the gotcha. For us, we can lower that. Do you have any idea what it costs, those signs, and how many you might need? Jimmy would be a better person to ask. Altogether, the signs, uh, for just the regular uh, speed limit sign, you're looking at about $40. If I put a post up, you're looking at another $40. So altogether, $80 and $100. Those ones that are 35 we can just check it out. Yes, Yeah, because it's cheaper than losing them. I've seen signs um, at the the edge of towns that say the speed limit's X unless otherwise posted. Would that help? I think he'd probably need to have the signs on the, the street. Actual signs on the street. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. 
Mayor, I make a motion that we go ahead and approve this request from uh, the police chief to change the ordinance from 35 miles per hour to 25 in residential districts, unless otherwise posted. That's that's all residential districts, right? right? I'm, I'm going to say yes. we're going to bring you something back at the July meeting. We just wanted to get the board's input just okay. to see if there was interest in reducing the speed limit. There, there yeah. appears to be interest. Yeah. There definitely is interest. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to ask for an ordinance uh, amending the code of ordinances. Okay. Could we, I don't want anybody to put themselves out because I think we hear our interest in this. Could we maybe get an idea, a, a definite quote as to quote. what the cost of the sign would be and a, an estimate of how many, just an idea. I don't think there are that many here, really. Sure, that would be great, just so we know what we're committing to. Okay, then we'll uh, this we'll take this as information and uh, to, uh, put it on the what July the July meeting. meeting. Okay, could I ask another question? And sure, it, it, it's relating to this, and not that you would necessarily, because you said it's a DOT thing. Um, I know we mentioned at one point, and I don't know if it went any further. And I'm curious, and I don't know who you who does it and who goes to whatever. Uh, we had a uh, big concern if we could get DOT to back up the 35 mile an hour speed limits coming into town. By the time you get around the curve here on 210, it's too late. Same thing happens uh, coming back here on the other side. I just feel like to back those up a little bit might give people an urge to slow down before it's too late coming over 210 same thing i'm gonna gun it until i get to oak hill and you know then it may take me another four blocks to get my speed down to where it needs to be i just feel like if we back the limits up some we might have a better chance of people slowing down a little sooner and those blinking signs they stop they they hit the brakes they are a godsend and if that means they get moved back, but what's involved in in us? Do we have to get DOT to back that speed limit up? Yes. Well, yes. how can we go about that? If I'm not mistaken. Staff has had several discussions with DOT, and our understanding is they're going to move a lot of these signs as you annex further out. They will move the signs. Is that going to be in my lifetime? It should Again, be I'm talking about it takes forever. Yeah, I'd say to get within the um, next done. couple of weeks, probably. Okay. Don't think I mean, I'm serious when I say that. It just seems that we wrong. talk about it, we talk no. about it. They don't. Okay. So I'm going to. Yeah, because I know they're going to change the speed limit signs on Obuish Creek Road and 55. And 55 and 210, and I think. We're working with them on that 55 one. 55 so. down to 35. Okay. Then right. there's the four way stop signs that kind of slow you down. On thank you. <laughs> Any okay, thank you. All right, Mr. Gregory, you have a presentation uh that you gave us. Thank you for your patience. You kind of brought up an issue that um maybe a source that not, I don't know. <laughs> uh I've been before this board for about two years now. Uh, and it relates to Highway 210, 9863, Highway 210. Uh, I was told by the Department of Transportation that if a posted speed limit was 55 miles an hour, uh, that road wide and sidewalk permit gutter was not recommended to be done at that point in time. However, it seems as though I can't see the end of the tunnel because either between town and DOT, somebody can't make up their mind what they want to do. They don't know whether they want to reduce the speed limit. Uh, they don't know whether they want to widen the road. Uh, I just want to build my building. I tried and tried and tried, and I handed out a, a pamphlet to, to you guys. Uh, first of all, I was supposed to be able to get an entrance off of Sundowner Lane 
whenever Mr. Johnson, our original planner, decided to do a 10 foot wide piece of property, which is illegal. DOT at the same time decided, hey, it's okay with us, we're going to go along with it, but uh, there were some things that were done wrong. Nobody wants to accept responsibility, and here I am a year, excuse me, about 18 months after the fact, and I don't have a driveway for me because my driveway got stopped up because everybody thought that Dan Ryan Homes would be a good thing because it brought in a lot of revenue for the town or whatever. And I'm in favor of growth. I don't have any problem with that. But I don't think I've been treated fair for my driveway to be closed down. If you look on page three of this thing, back on January the 23rd, I applied for a permit DOT out of Fayetteville. I've stood before Mr. Hines at least six times. He's told me time and time again, I'll <coughs> give you a permit, I'll give you a permit. I want to know when. He says the town is the problem. You guys say he's the problem. All I want to know is who's the problem. Somebody is because I can't move forward. Uh, in, in regard to <coughs> getting a, access off of the new Sundowner Lane, I've been told by Richie Hines, I've been told by Dan Ryan Holmes, we'll give you access off of that road. But you know what they're going to give you? 10 feet where you can drive a pickup across it. Why give somebody a access off of a, a street into a commercial property? 10 foot driveway is not legal into a commercial property. You've got to have at least 20. That does me no good. That's a bunch of junk, too. Uh, back in second go round, we had another. Uh, planning director, Mr. Calhoun. He went all the way through this stuff. I thought he did a good job. He tried to let me know where we were, what we were going on. And then if you read in his comments, he says, we're just waiting on the permit from DOT. And then he says, follow up on it and see what you can do. I jump in my truck, drive the table. The guy don't even want to talk to me. Uh, you, you don't get an answer from anybody. And, and you went through this whole book. I, it's no use for me to go through it other than if you look at a letter that, that I wrote and visited him back on April 2nd, he had a comment that says, if the speed limit is posted at 55 miles per hour, you said you would write a letter to the town of Anger explaining that DOT does not allow bourbon gunner and sidewalk posted 55 mile an hour limit. That was a year ago. If you ride out Highway 210 today, posted 55 miles an hour. So I was going to say one thing and I was going to do another. And I and, uh, talked about road widening. I talked with Mr. Rush here. Uh, and I believe on. Do you remember emailing him a letter and asking him, did we have to do red white? Mm -hmm. And what did he say? I don't remember what his response he was, said, but I think he said no, we sir. didn't have to. Yeah. And now we're coming back saying, you might have to do lane widening, you might have to do 36 feet wide, it's whatever Andrew wants to do, or I have an input in it, we got to do whatever. You guys don't treat me right. You got to be able to figure out and give me. A little bit of light on the other end of the tunnel and let me know what's going on. I mean, it's been too long. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mr. Gregory, if you don't mind, Mr. Mayor, there's one comment you made in here I'd like me to talk about. You wrote a letter to, um, well, Mr. Uh, you wrote a letter to, Mr. Hines wrote a letter to Jeff Jones on the very last page. And it says, we will issue official driveway permit once we receive the performance bond. And you put down below that, not acceptable. This is like giving DOT an open checkbook. What do you mean by that? 
tell you what the deal is. He won't tell me what got to be done. So if if I say, hey, I'm ready to go on and go with it, I've only got 200 feet and really got less than that because I'm taking it across the back and the front of the camp. And they want more land road wide that I was not willing to give up in the beginning for turning land for the other development. Uh, so he won't tell me what it is. If he comes back and he says, it's lane widening, and what you've got to do is going to be three hundred thousand dollars. Man, I got to throw in the towel. I can't. I can't do that. And somebody, if if he can give me a, a, a number, that would be fine. But you can't uh, say, "Well, I'm going to move forward." I I have spent eleven thousand five hundred dollars in the last four months revising the plan for them to do road widening. And still don't know what he wants. So every bit of that money is wasted. Mr. Gregor, have you have you spent any money on the building material for your buildings yet? I have. Yes, I have. I have spent four hundred and nineteen thousand dollars. My building is sitting in a warehouse in Salisbury, North Carolina. Do we know for a fact that that highway is marked fifty-five miles per hour? Yeah. I mean, it is right now, but that sign's probably going to be moved. Beyond. Okay, so. So, but we don't know when it's going to be moved, and we are stalling him being able to build, guys. Oh, He's I'll, invested I'll, all that money. Well, I don't, and I'm not hearing that we are stalling. And we're not. Well, DOT is. DOT is. There's a big difference. Okay, well, DOT is. DOT is. But he's been waiting for a year and a half. That is ridiculous. Yeah, and it is. I, I, I agree with that. I just I, That is ridiculous. Yeah. So I think we need to do yeah. something, guys. Yeah, I think we need to get Jeff yeah, in on this. To, that's fine. Well, DOT is stalling. Yeah, and I, uh, and I bring up the seat on Mr. Calhoun. When we were talking to Mr. Calhoun the last time I heard anything, it was, uh, we're ready to stamp it, Mr. Greg, and go yeah. forward. Yeah, that, that's unfortunate because. Randy was wrong. We, it, we've issued comment, Gregory, based off of our review of the ordinance, the engineer's review of the ordinance, and there's outstanding comments outside of the driveway that need to be addressed. But Gregory and his engineers had those comments for many weeks now. My first week here, we issued those comments. So while the driveway is an ongoing discussion with the DOT, we are just this last week and this week, having those discussions with you. There are some things that Mr. Gregory needs to be working on to make his project form part. Don't tell me. I, I can send those to you. Well, I know what they are. I don't have them in front of Mr. Gregory. Well, I, I, I need to ask the one I'm missing. Those are those are addressing issues not necessarily related to the town. Here's here's a comment. We have building design requirements. Gregory needs to show us the architecture. Mr. Johnson already approved that. Before you got here, y'all gonna make me do it again? I don't have that approved. I, if if that if there's approval, we need to have. It. I don't have. It. There are stormwater calculations and things that need to be worked out. O and M. We we have issued comments, and it's up to Mr. Gregory's engineer and Mr. Gregory to respond to those comments. This is not the venue to do that because I can't effectively respond to these. I have given comment. It is up to him and his engineer, and for us to have those discussions. <coughs> Landscaping mm -hmm. issues, lighting issues, those are all things that we commented on that have not been addressed. I'm also keeping in mind the drawings that were submitted prior when Mr. Um, Tingle and the prior um, planning directors were It was just a sketch. Um, the actual plans and specifications for the project we haven't had since, what, a month or so, a month and a right. half. I think they arrived prior to my arrival, which was the beginning of May. 
Um, but <clears throat> as soon as I got here, we, we hopped on it. Okay, let me and suggest we, that um, Mr. Town Manager, would you ride herd on this and see if we can't get a conclusion? Yes, sir, we'll that, do everything we can do. We met that with okay with the board. Uh, uh, with Dale, tell you like he said last week, they met with them this week. We're you know trying to bring yeah. DOT's requirements. It's time to get it resolved. Would you yeah. ride yeah. herd and we will get the DOT issue resolved. It's up to Gregory and his engineer resolve the Y'all, y'all work together and 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 get her done, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Jeff, Mr. Gregory has the uh, he has the staff to do all of this, and this has been going on too long. And I, it you know, like it it's just going on too long, and, and something needs to be done. I mean, he's got a staff to do anything. I it had been send a it number us. of weeks. Uh, it, it, it sounds us. like. Well, We're waiting on information that we need. I understand. This, this really isn't the, the forum or the venue to resolve this issue. I think this issue needs to be resolved uh, with staff, and Mr. Gregory, having the conversation and having the back and forth. If you've provided the information that, that we don't have, if you want to send that again so we have what you have. Uh, but if there's information that the town has asked for that they need, then just send that is, back to him. Is the town not responsible for what your, your uh, predecessor was before you? If he told you something, can I count on that? Or if that you have possible? an approval from him that is that we don't have in our records, if you just provide that to the town, we'll take a look at what you have. Okay. Thank you. Good enough. Let's get it resolved. All right. Uh, town manager's report. I might not have anything at this time. All right. Any departmental reports? Any questions? Oh, they're all here if you got any particular questions for I mean, yeah. yeah, I was going to say, since we do have them and we, I have read them, unless you have something special that you want to point our way to say, did you see this? Because it's really important. Or if we have a question for them, I think we could uh, proceed. Jimmy, uh, read through your proposed budget. But I did notice on there that you have, do you have a part time work with you? Yes, I But I thought it was my understanding that you were told to be in our part time. Yes, sir. I told that gentleman I didn't have a part time position available. Okay. Thank you. Um, Jimmy, if you would update them on the uh, widening of the. I can't think of the name of the street. Sure. Right. Yes, so uh, I talked with the um, with the contractor, uh, Johnson Brothers, Stadium Utilities. Um, they're hoping to widen uh, Wilma Street uh, the week of June the 19th. Good. Um, I will confirm that the prior week, and then we'll just send out your notes, letting everybody know that we'll do a two foot widening on each side of the road um, on Wilma Street. That'll be, as you go down Wilma Street, do everything on the right hand side. And then on the left hand side, we'll stop right there at the Tanglewood 3. We'll do the own uh, widening and place that along. Let's take uh, place that week and I'll turn that. But you will be notifying all of those residents that that will be taking place. And, right. and you, you are moving the mailboxes and the things that might be in the way. And I'm not back the mailboxes temporarily. Do the road widening and then place those back. Um, I said, I'll mow the floors the week of 15th. He said he's trying to finish up a project and hope to start on the 19th. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I get confirmation from him, I'll put out what's going on. Jimmy, how long do you think it will be? Because I, I I see that there there are enough bulldozers out there to move enough dirt. Um, how soon do you think it will be before they finish the widening in front of their new development? Um, I would say that would be. Some of the last things they do between the curb, place the curb, so we'll put, in, we'll put the utilities in first. So you can see that probably. Okay, because I know I'm going to get that question. It's like, well, okay, this is great. What about this one little piece right here? If we, if we were to widen in front of Tanglewood 3, it would have to be like that. Because we have oh, no, no, no. Totally. So totally. To oh, yeah. So basically, if we yep. waste too much, Just want to know when people ask, you know. But thank you. 
Okay. And um, also, um, I let Richard know today, uh, we, re, uh, we bid out the uh, second uh, parking lot project there along uh, West Church Street, just south of the depot, and we hope to have those bids on the 15th as well. Hope to have that by June 20th. For, uh, for the How is the other one coming, Jimmy? I mean, I, I see work going on back there every day, but I can't tell. Just a quick update. How is it progressing, and do you see an estimated completion time? So, talk with that contractor as well. So, what we're at right now is we're replacing the old two-inch water line. So our staff is back there now installing that new two-inch water line. Um, we'll reach out to the um, property owners so they can relocate their utilities. We relocated the water meters and the, the sewer, uh, sewer cleanout. And so now we're going to give them about three weeks to relocate their utilities. And then um, probably looking at the um, maybe second week of July for the contract to come in start. Okay. What's the uh, requirement for running gas line to some of them businesses? Because I've been being asked about. That would be for them to reach out to the um, to gas, gas company. company. And, uh, and the gas company. What probably what happened is we're, we're putting every, all of our stuff within the existing utility. So some of the property owners, they want that, they have to do an additional utility easement, put that in. So uh, they start reaching out. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, It'd be a good time to do it while they're well, did, in the Yeah, absolutely. Like that's yep. looking at natural gas town hall. Thank you. Okay, any further questions of staff? I just have one thing for Lee, for the police chief. I just want to thank him and his guys for this past weekend. They did an outstanding job for the amount of people that was in this town. Um, thank you. Here, here. Chief, are we utilizing the bike that y'all have? Are we utilizing the bike y'all got? All right, anything else? We, uh, a quick, yeah, one quickie here okay. for me. Can we please address, um, Richard? Um, I don't know that anybody from the town was actually supervising this weekend's event at the park, were they? Which event was it? The bike? Bike fest? I mean, did. Did we have someone, I mean, it's, I'm not talking about the police being there. They're there for a different reason. But anybody else, I just feel, you know, that would be one of those things we're talking about, just job yeah. descriptions of what this person would do to help well, supervise. You know, if you're contracting them and you're organizing with them, I just, if we've got any more coming up before someone is hired, we need to look into the police cannot be solving problems down there yeah. you know it's not that's not what they're there for so if we could think ahead if there are any yeah. other concerts or things coming up somebody needs to be on site to supervise yeah. Yeah. that event um Tom, as i understand that particular event that is not a town no sponsored yeah. event yeah that's uh well it just so, happens I mean, to happen but in if nature. we if we are rent, rent, renting them the facility, I mean, is somebody not there supervising what's going on? Well, I, I, well, I would say for a two-day all-night nighttime event that this is not a birthday party in the afternoon yeah. or a wedding. Um, this is masses of people with problems to be solved. And I saw people over at, at electrical boxes working with electricity. That is not a good idea. <laughs> I, at, you said in your new job description that this person would work nights and weekends, and I feel like if we're renting it, we need to supervise, especially that big of a crowd. It was huge. I was down here, and nobody there to help troubleshoot or deal with a problem or stop anything that really wasn't being done correctly. That's just my thoughts on the matter. Sounds like a good suggestion going forward. Yeah. As we, okay. Too big of an event for someone not to be there. Right. Anything further? We, um, 
have a, a closed hearing under GS 143-318.11A6 for personnel matter. So we will adjourn this meeting and after five minutes um, come back in session in the closed session. Thank you all for being here. Mm -hmm.